Okay, so everybody, welcome. Thanks a lot for coming out this evening. This is uh, uh, our first salon, Baumhaus Salon Number One, growing a sustainable urban culture. And that's what we want to do. Um, I guess first of all, I'll start off with everything uh, by thanking you for coming here. It's great that you guys are all here. It's brilliant because this is what we need. We need people coming together, talking collaborating and communicating to figure out what it is that we can do to make the world a better place. So um, the Baumhaus project is a project to build a public space that is dedicated to the idea of bringing people together to engage with each other in meaningful ways, just like we're doing here tonight. We figured that uh, we need more public spaces where people can come together, Germans, expat artists, immigrants, everybody. And Think about what it is that we can do to make our world a better place, our neighborhood a better place, our communities a better places, and come up with real solutions. And so that's the theme, theme tonight is what is it that you can do for, to make the world a better place, and what can we all do together, collaboratively, to make the world a better place. So we'll ask you to consider those questions and ideas, and you can ask the panel, get their feedback. But they've all thought about it for a while now, so they've got some brilliant, brilliant thoughts on this. Um, later on tonight, after this panel discussion is over, we have a bunch of these, uh, if you look inside these folders in the tables, there's speech bubbles. And you can use these pens and pencils right now, you can break them out right now, take notes, ask questions, and then later, around the corner here, you can put your ideas up on these, these boards. And what we hope to do is have you guys create an art installation of ideas, all right? So feel free to use these things all night long and put them up anywhere. If you want to put them up in the art, put them up in the art. If you want to put them on your forehead, put one on your forehead. Um, just stick them up with the, the tape. Um, after uh, we, we, we get done with the open idea of Werkstatt, then there's a jazz band that's going to be playing actually during that. They're a rare groove jazz band. They're really great. And uh, after that, then we have a DJ. And uh, he's brilliant. And then we'll have some, some live improvisation. So right about now, that's enough of an intro, and I'll turn it over to, to Ella Chicago, <laughs> our moderator, and she'll introduce the guests, and we'll go from there. And once again, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Scott, and Karen, and the whole Baumhaus team for inviting us for tonight's discussion. My name is Ela Kagel, I'm a freelance curator and producer, and together with a bunch of people I run the Supermarkt project in berlin Berlin. There's also my colleague Michelle with me. So if you want to know a little bit about the Supermarkt and what we do, um, you can talk to us. So that's basically also how we, uh, how we met when um, Scott came to Supermarkt, talked about the Baumhaus, and when he invited me to be a moderator which I gladly accepted. And before uh, I will introduce our panel to everyone, I just uh, would like to invite all of you to really engage in the discussion. Let's not make it a talk talk, but let's rather uh, try to uh, open up quite early. Everyone here on the panel is, um, is in their own right an expert on their own field. But when we talk about making the world a better place, which is quite a broad topic in itself, I think you are all experts too, and it would be great to just get your feedback, your comments and your ideas. So, I'd like to introduce everyone sitting next to me on the panel, and it's nice the ladies have divided themselves, so the men, I'm in the middle. And uh, I'd love to start with Adrienne Göhler, she's a publicist and curator, a former member of the Berlin Senate and now working on issues such as access and sustainability. Next to me, excuse me? Aesthetics, oh, not to miss the aesthetics, oh, aesthetics of course. Accessing aesthetics. Okay. Adrian, but you also have the opportunity to talk a little bit more in depth about what you do. Next to me is Christine Ring, uh, American, now uh, or living in Berlin for uh, quite a long time. Christine is architect and curator. She is uh, she's found one of the founding members of the uh, DATS, the German Architecture Center. And um, 
Christine uh, is also uh, takes a, a close look at the uh, as, at um, yeah, self-made urban urban development projects here in the city, and we'll talk about that too. Sitting next to me is Isaac Abrams. Scott introduced him as the, the godfather of psychedelic art, and uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure he is, because we just had a very interesting discussion upstairs. Isaac is uh, visiting Berlin, he's also visiting the, uh, the Baumhaus right now, and uh, working on an installation. And finally, last but not least, Daniel Dam, transdisciplinary scientist. And yeah, what is your main topic? The information I got is also sustainability lifestyles, right? That's basically what you are working on. Shall I ask? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do we yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, I would be happy to skip the mic. Yeah. The question is if people understand us without mic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, I'm so happy. Let's oh, skip okay. the mic. Okay, skip the mic. <laughs> That's that's wonderful. That's a bit. That makes it that's much easier. Well, the first question, and that's also the opening question for uh, today's debate, is what is it that you're actually doing to make the world a better place? Everyone here has a specific take on that. And I would just like to give everyone here in the panel a chance to talk a little bit about their project, about what they do, and how does this relates to actually making the world better. Like you start, or that you make your body. He was in the middle of it. You are, you are. No, I, I, I just only took the microphone and just put it back. So that's one. But I can start. That makes you start. All right. Uh, so sustainable lifestyles, at least, is not my main topic, but um, life is my topic, um, and the diversity of life. Originally, I'm a geographer. I started um, my scientific work in, in West Africa about subsistence economy, so about the exchange uh, processes and uh, about uh, agroforestry and uh, small-scale agricultural um, economic systems based on, on elder councils, based on local government strategies. and. Um, after that, I'm, I changed from, from being originally a geographer to the field of economy and of subsistence economy. And to that time, uh, that was around 2000 to 2004, um, I concentrated in my work on subsistence economy in Western societies. Because I always thought that uh, subsistence is something that we don't only have in so-called um, uh, poor societies or something that we don't only have in middle-aged societies, but it is something that is about self-organization, it's about empowerment of local people, it's about services, and it's about social and cultural capital. It's the glue that keeps a society together in our Western societies uh, and that coordinates um, the creative potentials and ideas of people, putting together their ideas, their, their empathy to develop something new, to, to take responsibility for their own life and for the design of their own lifestyles. So at that case, in that point, the lifestyle question comes together. Today I'm in a, in a I would say, a dif difficult crash, a, a, a difficult in between uh, of, of uh, Talks because I just came from the German Bundestag uh, and it was uh, where I initiated last year a roundtable about sustainable uh, finances and um, about institutional capital. So the thousands of millions of euros that are invested in Europe into econ economic activities. And um, as you all know, we, we have something that we call the big finance market crisis and that is strongly interrelated with um, with our ecosystem and um, uh, something that we call global overshoot in the natural sciences um, means uh, our future potentials um, uh, for, the, for the next decades. The global <coughs> overshoot um, is um, 
I'll I describe from another, another perspective. Uh, the global biocapacity, so the biocapacity is the bioproductivity per area worldwide. So how much biological activity can be developed on the, on the planet Earth. And on the other hand, you have the ecological footprint of mankind all over the world. And in the moment when the ecological footprint becomes bigger than the biocapacity of the planet Earth, we have something that we call global overshoot. So we start to destroy the substances of that we live. We destroy, destroy the base of, of, of ecological and also of human and cultural evolution. The global overshoot is an indicator for uh, the non-sustainable lifestyle we, we achieved over the last 150 years since the beginning of the industrialization. And the global overshoot uh, is um, produced by the externalization of costs, by the, that's not Deutsch, the Auslagerung von ökologischen Folgekosten. These private interests uh, destroy our common base of life. And um, I find it very interesting to look upon how local engagement, how local design of living conditions can change our future in a way that we don't have and we don't will have a, a global overshoot anymore. So that we bring together our living conditions with our boundaries and that we develop something like an immaterial wealth and immaterial life. And now everyone who overuses the comments, our common comments, uh, becomes the witches and, act, and, and the result is the accumulation of power, politi political, economic and social power in the hands of the few people. And I close this initial remark of me with, um, with, with a quotation of uh, Mahatma Gandhi, uh, who, who said, uh, the world has enough uh, for everyone's need, but not enough for a few people's greed. Die Welt hat genug für jeden, für den Bedarf von allen, aber nicht genug für die Gier von wenigen. And for that we need political action, we need civil action, and we need a new and strong pressure on, um, on our living conditions, our economy and our politics. Thanks so much, Daniel, for these initial remarks. And I think we've heard a lot of points that are interesting for us for the debate we're going to have. Isaac, you are here for a couple of weeks and you help the Baumhaus people with their project. What is your motivation? What drives you to invest your time and talent to do this? Well, you asked the question, what are, what are we doing? Exactly. To and make the world a better place. That's so, it. there's a very little bit of the world that I'm going to make a better place by making something beautiful. I'm making a very beautiful uh, set of glass panels, which are going to be dividers and also be uniters in a certain sense because they're going to be really beautiful. People are going to see them and really enjoy them. The act of making something beautiful in a small way or in a larger way is what I feel my individual contribution can be to the world. I think uh, that one of the things that stands between the solution to the kind of problems that that Daniel mentioned, is the absolute poverty of the general level of the appreciation of an aesthetic reality. So people do not see the marvelous detail that the natural world has, and they don't demand beauty and the kind of emotional comfort in life that beauty is so important for. And I think that uh, so much of what we do is reactive to ugliness and it means sustaining an anger. And since we're quoting people from India, Buddha, who said to hold on to anger is like swallowing poison and expecting the person that you're angry at to die. And 
That's a real problem that we have. I think we have to love each other and love the beauty that we create and turn the ship away from only this material form of success. When they say that current Ameri one of the two current American uh, candidates for president, oh, he's so successful, he has a lot of money. But that makes him very successful. Now, the damage he's done to people, they don't look at it. And all of that kind of thing. All they see is that he's accumulated a lot of money. And he has cars with elevators and so on like that. And this is this footprint that you're talking about. It's actually almost a boot print. It's, not even, it's huge. And I think that in, in doing small acts, in doing personal things, and improving myself, to be uh, to doing art and, and really putting myself strongly to it. I kind of help humanity, because I'm part of humanity. If I help myself, I'm helping humanity, and I think it's a, my message and my feeling of what I'd like to talk about. Thanks, Isaac. What is it that you do to make the world a better place? Well, that's, uh, I've got some big shoes to fill here. Yeah. Um, um, I'm an architect, and uh, I work on showing what architects do. And that might seem like a bit of a mod, really. Um, designing buildings, making them more pretty, but in as looking and trying to show what an architect or designer or um, an engineer does is really, it's it's looking at the, the way that they work and analyzing and trying to show exactly what, what, a, what, what one has to go through in terms of a process and seeing what is the problem and how can this problem be solved in a way that it's that it makes the world a better place, maybe on a different level, maybe on a functional level, maybe on an aesthetic level. Um, but there are so many ways to solve the problem. There's never a right way. There's never a right kind of architecture, a right design. It's always an interpretation. And showing the way a designer and an architect goes about this is showing the possibilities about what 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 can be possible and opening that up for many people to see so that's what I like to do that's what I like to work on and at the moment I'm working on a project called self-made city and it's looking at how people not only architects and designers have gotten together and um, are trying to realize their dreams. Now maybe one that uh, involves living together, sharing spaces, um, but, um, or it could be one that's, um, that's uh, a dream about helping other people, about uh, finding a way to manifest this dream into a form so that so that the people can can really um, live together in a way that uh, that it's it's good for them and it's the way that they've thought about and this is something that's really been missing in, in, in Berlin for a, for a long time um, and when the the the, the last especially particularly in terms of new building in the last 10 or 15 years. Uh, Many people have been finding ways to transform their dreams in, into reality. So um, I hope that in showing these projects and analyzing what is really important about the projects in terms of the qualities that have come about, not only on the architectural level, of course, also the architectural level, um, but uh, in terms of the organization of spaces and the organization of, of how they live together and, their, and, and realize um, the space in order to live their dreams um, or the, in the way that they would like to live, that others might be able to do the same. And there, um, for example, um, when the city is talking about um, perhaps uh, um, not selling off the land, the rest of the land that the city has, but um, I don't, uh, in giving the land out in a leasehold kind of situation so that um, Others might have, uh, anyway, that um, they need to have certain kinds of 
qualities, a kind of a quality um, um, framework in order to make the decision who is going to get this land. So I'm um, hoping that in analyzing all of these projects that we'll be able to come up with a kind of a, a quality criteria in order to help the, the city make their decisions. So that's to complete this round, I'd love to ask Adrienne, what is your take on making the world a better place, Adrienne? Well, the quintessence of everything I did in my life, like being a psychologue by formation, then uh, having directed the Art School of Hamburg for 12 years, then being a little, making a, a very interesting internship as a senator for for culture, science, and research, and then directing the Cultural Capital Fund, the Hauptstadt Kultur Fund. So I felt extremely the need to bring art, aesthetics, and ecology somehow together. Because it was, there being in, in politics, you discover what we, what we suffer every day, but this is everything is in, compartments, nothing is combined. And it was for me extremely strange coming to Berlin because the government failed because of being totally a bankruptcy in Berlin. But wasting so much money by not cooperating. And then discovering that in all the foundations it's the same principle. So there it's not about concern, da geht es nicht um Zuständigkeit in den Stiftungen, sondern um Profilbildung, so it's about profiles in the foundation or about uh, portfolios and everything which is, seemed very important to me, like the artistic concept in all the, for all the important questions of the world, like how the economy is going, how with the big topics like water, like climate, like everything. So you don't find a space, you don't find a foundation, you don't, you cannot apply in the combination. So all the environmental foundations would say, but this is art, we cannot pay for art. So I started to think about an exhibition called Examples to Follow. Expeditions in Aesthetics and Sustainability. So, nach Ahnung empfohlen, Expeditionen in Ästhetik und Nachhaltigkeit. I started with it in the Uferhall in the wedding. And meanwhile, we have been in quite a lot of regions in the world, such as Mumbai, as Addis Ababa, as um, Beijing, and we will continue on Mexico and Brazil and hopefully also on the World Bank of Washington. And this is on, on purpose because I feel that talking about art and the ways we, um, we fund the arts is in itself totally unsustainable. Because we, we can apply, let's take the example of Hauptstadt Kulturfonds. Twice a year you can apply and you should always invent a total new topic. It has never seen, never heard, never listened to. So the idea of being always totally new, this is a big question mark. And then you cannot apply a second time for the same for the same context or the same content. You always have to invent a new topic. So this is unsustainable. So the idea was making whole a world tour of an, of an um, exhibition that combines the knowledge and the action concepts of artists, scientists, NGOs, and inventors, because I think we can have a strong alliance also to inventors who normally are totally underground. So this is what the um, exhibition is about, and it is a kind of preludium for what I want to do in future, 
establishing a fund for aesthetics and sustainability. And by the way, aesthetics is for me not only beauty, but it's the sum of the perceptions. So it is a policy or actions that are determined by the senses, by smelling, touching, seeing, listening. And this is extremely necessary when we see that sustainability is more or less a concept for technology, better technology. <coughs> and the belief of so many so-called sustainable experts in the technology, in the green uh, technology that can again be quicker, faster, bigger, uh, and whatever. I don't think that we have this time and also not we should not lean on this expert. And I think if you talk, because you, you said everybody is an expert on his field, uh, or her field, I think part of the big crisis we are into is that we lend too much on experts. So let's, I think we urgently need an anti-expert time, and therefore we need new alliances and what is my concern, I think, art, science, NGOs, and inventor is a very good new alliance to go for.